Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my Ferrari Road to Glory. Round 13, unlucky for some. We're going to find out if that's the case for us here today. The Belgium Grand Prix is upon us and we have another sprint race, which could be interesting. Essentially double points, as you know, we have the extra points up for offer in the sprint on top of the main race. So we're going to see how the weekend pans out. If you haven't seen the last race, guys, go check it out. The Hungarian Grand Prix, link in the top right. We are going to get stuck in though and get into the weekend's action. Starting off with an inheritance of extra R&D points as we had engine issues in Hungary. So we're going to have a little bit more budget to spend. We had the magnetic compound arrive to improve our ERS for this power circuit. And we're going to add to that by doing some more upgrades on reliability. The main one is the energy store. It's the only part of the car which we haven't improved yet. And we're very marginal if we're going to make it or not you know on that last unit for the last 10 12 races so i need that upgrade also control electronics because we only have two of those available we're going to switch to our second one now before that we're going to use another allocation of the mguh and we're also going to upgrade and freshen up the turbocharger and then like i said before the control electronics we only have two of those we're going to run our second one now we should be able to make it to the end on that second one barring any failures so with that done, we get to the weekend's action, guys. And like I said, we've got a sprint race ahead of us. The sprint, though, is dry. The main race is wet, especially for the first half of the Grand Prix. So we're going to see some dynamic weather and a bit of unpredictability in that one. Either way, we're going to jump straight into it with upgrades. Now, you saw we had the engine upgrade arrive for the magnetic compound for the ERS. But we've dropped a fourth as McLaren and Mercedes bring big upgrades to this race along with Red Bull. And yeah, we're going to see how that affects things. Also further down, Haas bringing upgrades, closing the gap to Aston Martin and uh, yeah, also Alpine as well. So yeah, a bit of a shuffle up. Either way, we're going to get into it, starting off with Friday practice and getting a baseline feeling, understanding of the car, trying to see where the limit is. So currently P4, I can really tell the AI are a bit stronger here. They're not as bad as the last couple of races. We're going to have a bit more on our plate this weekend in terms of AI pace and also the fact we dropped a fourth in the performance chart. You know, I can feel and I can see Mercedes and McLaren have improved and so have Red Bull. So as you can see, we had slightly above average tire wear, very good fuel consumption. So that's a good sign. And we finished practice top of the pile, but not really fully accurate as we had rain spoil things. So not really true lap times being reflected. So we're now going to jump into qualifying. Again, dry session, no rain forecast, no dramas. We're going to get stuck in straight away and see what kind of pace we have. Hopefully, we can make it yet another pole position. It's going to be tough. I think there's going to be a bit more of a, of a closer margin in this one. Currently, soft tyres on for our first timed lap in the session. I had a bit of a lock up on the front right down to turn one, so we didn't quite catch the entirety of the apex, although we did have a good exit, so we somewhat recovered it. Uh, turn eight, also a bit of a lock up slash understeer. Turn nine didn't really get on that apex and the inside curb enough so just little small margins where there's little bit, you know bits and bobs of time and all the things we can shave off overall we're going to make our way through the bus stop chicane bit of oversteer mid apex as we close out the lap and drop into a 39.9 the first person to do so and as we go back to the pits lewis hamilton out of nowhere goes provisional pole mercedes upgrades are here and they have improved. Lando Norris also P3 in the improvement. McLaren Charles Leclerc P6 with a 140.1. So our teammate again struggling to deliver. So we're going to jump now onto the final attempt. Bit of oversteer on the exit, but we still get good traction and we start off the lap. We know there's a bit of time at turn one, breaking at the white line down to third gear. This time we get the apex, but as I mentioned before. We had a really good exit, so we lose a little bit on the way out. So it's going to be a fractional improvement in sector one as we just basically carry the speed all the way through a Rouge Radion and then onto the Camel Straight. So take a breather and prepare for Le Com. You're going to brake and bring the car all the way onto the curb at the 50, down to fifth gear with these more heavily modified cars and make sure that direction change is on point. Careful for track limits as we head towards turn eight hold it in third and then sh short shift to fourth gear to get a good exit turn nine this time we're going to get that inside apex and we get a much better exit as the checkered flag drops 
up by two tenths. Lando Norris, though, goes provisional pole in the McLaren, moving the benchmark into the eight. So at the minute, we are on course for pole. Russell up to second place ahead of Hamilton as we go through the Fanny Chicane, finding even more time. Stavlo just clipping the inside curb enough to get the rotation, and we're three and a half tenths up. But Charles Leclerc sets a 139.4 mile reaction. I was impressed and really shocked at that sort of you know evolution compared to his first run. He was P6, and now suddenly we're up against it. We're P7 out of nowhere. So we need this bus stop chicane. We get on the anchors nice and late, change the direction, and now we get a brilliant exit and traction across the line. Is it enough? Yes, excellent lap. We're all very, very pleased with that one. Nice work. Come on, I'll see you back in the pits. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Martinez lines up on pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Russell, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Sonoda, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Joe, Albon, Magnussen, Bottas, Holkenberg, Stroll, Ricardo, and Logan Sargent. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Here we go then. Time for the sprint race. Great qualifying yesterday. A lot of fun, you know, taking part in that, having such fine margins. But now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and the main event. Now, this, of course, is the sprint race. No rain forecast us for the main race. So for now, we just want to try and secure the win. Currently in the one-two. Let's see if we can bring it home in those exact same positions. We line the car up nice and aggressive, pointing towards the left. Here we go. Lights on for the sprint at Belgium. Away we go. Bit of a little spin, but we'll take it. Leclerc will go up high to the outside. We'll just hold the inside line beautifully. And crucially, get a big exit as well. Look at the gap to Leclerc there, six tenths out of turn one, absolutely huge. Although we're not out of the woods just yet as we pick up a bit of understeer. Making our way down the Kemmel straight. Leclerc closing. We're using all the battery here to try and hold on. And crucially, we do just that. So let's try and open up a gap now in this middle sector. Hopefully, we can get these mediums switched on. Everyone's in the exact same compound all the way through. So, no soft tires from what I can tell, no hards, unless maybe further down. So, let's get into it. I think it's going to be a tough one. Qualifying was close, so I think the race will be equally as competitive. So, the margins could be fine and could be key and could be decisive. The close is really putting the pressure on, though. I'm unable to string away and open up any gap in the middle sector. Let's try and now Stablo here. We're going to have to get on the batteries again here. Through the back straight. Good exit again there. Giving ourselves a little bit of a gap. We'll burn up a bit more of the energy. The AR don't usually use a deployment down this straight. And you can see there we're actually increasing our gap over the club briefly. So lap one done. And crucially, still P1. But let's keep it going. Seven more laps to go. First warning, marginal, but just out, got to be careful. Leclerc is really going for it. He seems to have a lot of pace. Leclerc takes P1 in the sprint. Further back, Russell battling with Perez. Oh, let Leclerc hold this for now. I'll we'll see what kind of pace he has. The RS will now be enabled, so uh, we'll be able to sit behind quite nicely. as We have a bit of a snap of oversteer there. When you're within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Well, I've got to say, the is bloody going for it. He's building a gap and I'm not able to match his pace. The AI are very strong in the middle sector. We'll use some battery here, which I was hoping to save, but we'll use it to get back within Leclerc's DRS, which will help us. But 
Wow, Charles really going for it, and he's still going for it. Oh, I missed the downshift. That's not ideal. Bit of a drift. We do just hold on to some DRS, but we are really flirting here with the limits. The AI bouncing back, and Leclerc especially, looking very quick around it. I think if we finish in second, that'd be a decent... That'd be a decent result if we've got P2. Okay, Verstappen's had a poor turn one, so we've got a bit of respite, so we can relax. Okay, that was a bit of a better middle sector. I found three tenths. Getting my act together a little bit, and that was a bit more on the money. More competitive, more on the pace. This is like a yo-yo. Now the lead is stretching back out of Verstappen. Tenth behind, so we're going to use battery to stay ahead. I think I'll, I'll take a P2 right now. I don't know if we've got the pace to win this, but... Damage limitation. I'm also concerned about the main race and our pace in the wet conditions. So I think if we, you know, try, we can do okay. But we're going to have to do some big damage limitation, I think, in both races here. So let's see. Three laps to go. Okay, now Leclerc starting to struggle. Let's see if we can try something on the last lap. We'll just get nice and close through this part of the track. Make sure our turn one is on the money. Verstappen struggling in traction zones, so he loses out quite a bit. Nice and easy. Get the apex, and crucially, get the drive and the exit, which we do. We can now prepare the run on the Kemmel straight. And we can try and nick this sprint win when I haven't quite had the pace, but we can get maximum points. Although we don't have the fast slap. Leclerc has no answer, and we breeze past. Now let's see if we can finish here. I reckon, I reckon there could be a late drag to the line, maybe, down to the, camel sh uh, to the bus stop chicane. So uh, we'll see. Let's try and pull away in this middle sector if possible. We'll stop them through on Leclerc. That will take the pressure off. As they're still going at it through Stavlo. And Verstappen's got ahead. So Leclerc loses a pair on the last lap and could lose more. With Perez lurking. To be fair, Leclerc's going to, I think, a re-challenge of a snap in here. Who knows? Either way, we're going to pick up the win in the sprint, which is crucial. Good race management. And we didn't quite have to pace. And here we go. Final corner. Checkered flag. Job done. Now main event. Thank you, thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a really strong drive and a great finish. Well done. Welcome to this visit to the Ardennes countryside. Spa-Francorchamps hosted its first Grand Prix back in 1925. And this historic track is loved by drivers and fans alike. And us here in the commentary box too. So it's a warm welcome from the Belgian Grand Prix. Spa-Francorchamps is a 4.35 mile tour of the Ardennes countryside, with nine rights and 10 lefts, giving us a grand total of 19 corners. Average lap speeds in the dry can reach about 145 miles per hour, but without a significant improvement in the conditions, we're not gonna be seeing anything like that today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Martinez lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Hamilton, Norris, Ocon, Gasly, Russell, Sonoda, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Sargent, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Ricardo, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Anthony Davidson, thanks for joining me once again for the Grand Prix. Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? They're in for a tough race today, as they'll be starting out of position due to a penalty from earlier in the weekend. It's unfortunate, but it happens to everyone at some point. You just have to accept your fate, knuckle down and get on with the business of making up that deficit during the Grand Prix. So they'll be pushing hard today, one to watch for sure. And now, just like that, we switch to wet weather conditions. P1, Verstappen P2, Leclerc P3. We're going to run it back and see exactly what happens. 
For the forecast, as you can see, we have rain for the first half and then dries later. I'm tempted to start an intermediate, but we don't need to risk. We are leading the championship with a pretty healthy margin, so right tire at the right time, simply put. So we're going to play it safe. Either way, uh, fuel-wise, I've gone about 0.2 over. Uh, again, don't need to really risk it on fuel either. Either way, let's get into it and let's see. I think the big concern for me is going to be the wet. I think we might struggle for pace, but hopefully it dries up quick and we can speed things up. Either way, let's get into it. Here we go. Lots of rain. We're pointed aggressively to the inside. Away we go. A bit of wheel spin there. But luckily Verstappen doesn't get off to a flyer. And we can hold on to the lead. I'm going to run it a bit deep to make sure we get a good exit. Good traction. Really good traction. Leclerc down to P4. Norris up to P5. Big lift for a rouge just to kind of get an understanding of where the conditions are. Verstappen's got a good run through a Rouge and Radion. He might just challenge here. Nothing will be okay. Yeah, we'll be fine. Downside of the MP1 is that you're going through these conditions for the very first time and you're having to readapt. Whereas the AI are fully dialed in. So we're going to have to make our car a bit wide at times. But full focus, I'm sure we'll be okay. And I can just defend smartly. A bit like in Silverstone. Just be smart with where we place our car and the racing lines we take. And we should be alright. Crucially, we're pretty decent on exits and traction, it seems like. So. We're hurting the AI. We are losing a bucket of time though through Pool 1. My god. This happened there. Just completely closed in on me. Still, we can manage with this. Let's get a weather update. Weather report. The rain's getting lighter now, but it's going to take a while for the track to dry out. Full wet seemed like the best tyre for now. Okay. So, we'll bear that in mind. The track's only going to get better. I'll select intermediates. For the next stint. What's happened there? Try to close in, but we've got obviously a lot of battery at this stage. Not flat yet. What's happened? Looking. Luckily we hold on to the bus stop. What's happened does not lunge. We are very slow. Hopefully we get more comfortable and get faster. Lucky, like I said, my traction is good. You can see the Stappen lost half a second there out the bus stop so that's what's going to give us a bit of respite is our exits out of slow corners you can see again here we're going to push the gap to north of a second now we're starting to get comfortable and find a bit of pace starting to push in a couple of corners we're stopping still there but we are just starting to stretch the field and spread the field a little bit we go quickest which is a good sign now we wait for the intermediate call. Whoa! Whew. Getting a bit too confident. I was just about to say, I'm quite happy for these conditions to stay. It seems like we're quicker, so the longer they continue, the more of a gap we can build. Definitely improvement over Silverstone. Oh. ESC deployed. The virtual safety car has been deployed. We need to keep a positive delta here. Slow down and maintain a positive delta. No idea what happened. Red flag, I'll put a replay up on screen now for you guys to watch, but I'll watch it back afterwards. I've literally got no idea. I wasn't even looking at the mini-map, so no idea. Anyway, let's deal with this, and let's possibly switch to Inters. Right, we're going to go with the Intermediate. I think it makes sense, so we're wrong with this. Restart lap 5, and the track will be drying very soon. More rain possibly at the end, so the weather forecast has changed. Let's see how this all pans out. Anyway, time for another race start. It's good to get back on track. Let's make the best of this restart. Let's go. Here we go again. Got some information on Hamilton for you. They've got an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. So Hamilton with car trouble. Verstappen aggressive. Again, we need to readapt to the conditions. Yellow flag behind. We get good traction on the inside line. Clear. That yellow flag still there further back. And Russell's out, so Mercedes having an absolute shocker. Okay, caution, caution. Virtual safety car is out. Reduce speed and maintain a positive delta on your dash. So a horror show for Mercedes. Either way, 
We're gonna try and see if we can get used to these tyres. The tyre situation is an interesting one, but I think the right call is to stick with what we've got for now. Virtual safety car is ending. Maintain your pace until we get the green flags. VSC ending. Wait for the greens. So back on the way, green flag. We're not far from drives at all, hence that radio you just heard. But now we have to, you know, swim with the sharks here and readapt to the snapping. Trying to put pressure on now, try to take that flat. And it might cost us the snapping and Perez both lining up to look for a pass. The snapping on the outside, Perez on the inside. We're going to keep it pinned through Blanchimont and we're going to just hold on. Park car in the middle of the track. Again, need like a lap or two just to get used to everything and the tyres and the conditions. Norris puts a move on Verstappen who pits. Okay, the stewards have now disabled DRS. DRS is now disabled. Leclerc also pits. There's a big break in the train. A lot of cars are in. Charles is in the pits. Are they going for drives? Drives or... Did they all get damaged or something? Or there's a few guys on wet? I mean, the track is drying rapidly, but I mean, the rain's still falling and it's still, you know, DRS disabled. We'll push just in case, but that's really throwing me off now. More than half the field has pit. Right, we're no longer sure that these tyres are the right ones. It might be time to come in and change. Hmm. I'll put hard tyres ready to go. We've had no weather change, you know, being offered by the team, so I don't think it's ready yet. Okay, so we're leading our teammate by 21.4 seconds. Okay, they're on fresh hards. They're eighth. Pitting this lap then. Coming to the pits at the end of this lap. So they have gone for dryers and they've gone for the hards. So we are also going to follow suit as everyone's going to box. Don't speed. There we go. We've had a few of those recently. Along with the VSC restart. Right. Nice easy stop please, boys. Please don't get held. And we get held by the Alpine. Marginal. Luckily, Perez also got held and we didn't jump us. Have we been undercut by those who switched the dryers a lap ago? Don't think so. I think we're going to be all right. Okay, one stop to go. Just one stop left in this strategy. Big snap out of the pit lane, but we hold on to first place. I thought it was a bit wet. DRS has been enabled. DRS is now enabled. On the last lap to pit. Although DRS now enabled the Sappens right on us with warm hard tyres up to temperature and we can't do anything about that. That is just a rocket ship. So the Sappen does manage to make it work. I thought the track was too wet and to be fair I, I did stay in front but the momentum there just too much. Meanwhile Leclerc battling with Perez doing the exact same thing. So uh, yeah Alonso up to P5 and everyone on hard tyre seemingly to the end barring that possible late weather update so let's try and see if we can find our pace we were struggling in the sprint let's see what we're like in the full race on the hard tire Verstappen's making a break for it I'm going to use all the battery here to try and stick with him we've got good straight lines to be compared to Max I think our car is a bit less draggy with the upgrades so we'll stay in Verstappen's DRS Leclerc also with us for the ride just got to try and stay in DRS for now we can tag team Verstappen Using every last bit of battery, this happens really making me work for this. I think we'll have the RS just about, although we're completely on fumes now for battery. Let's hope the snapping starts to run out of pace. If not, we're in a bit of trouble. It Perez threw on Leclerc, who lost the RS on me. So Leclerc done a P4. It's Red Bull versus Ferrari for this one. That's for sure. Track limits. First one for the main race. We've got one in the sprint. At the minute, this happens still very quick. I can't quite close in. I'm starting to just save a little bit of battery now, though. I think as tire wear kicks in, I'm a bit quicker. On fresh tires, I'm very slow. Perez isn't going anywhere, and he's taking Leclerc with, on the ride with him. But Leclerc just out of the RS range here. Either way, it's still a top four. And then everyone else behind Alonso. We're approaching the pit window and you're going to be on mediums. I don't think so, Chief. I wonder if the AI are going to stop again and get off the hard tyres. I don't plan to. We're going to go to the end on these. 
barring a late shower, which can spoil things. Oh, our Paris does pit. And Leclerc. Charles is in for his stop now. So Verstappen will be in this lap as well, and everybody else. We're going to stay out. In this lap, in this lap, push now. We've got no reason to box. Weather report. Okay, radar is clear. Weather is looking good for now. Drives definitely seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. Perez onto the softs. That's what everyone's going to go for. Let's just stay out. I think we can win this, staying on track. And there we go, Max pits as expected. And we will stay out and go to the finish. Tires are still pretty good. So I think we're going to stick with it. Might be suffering at the end, but it'll be worth it. We've got good enough pace to make this work. 17 seconds to Perez right now. He'll probably undercut Verstappen. Hmm. 42.5. Good two seconds or so, quicker than us. I guess we'll see which strategy wins out. 41.9. Okay, that's about three seconds a lot quicker. I mean, if the Red Bulls work together here and relay and swap places and then battle, maybe they could. Depends how long their soft tires hold on. I'm keen to see what Leclerc does. Ferrari have a bit of a Ferrari strategy with him, but those mediums could come good at the end. No word on rain, so I don't think we're going to get that. So it's going to be a race to the finish. 10 seconds is the gap. Okay, a few good laps from us. The last one and this one, we've managed to up the pace. Used a lot of the battery, but we've only lost like 1.5 seconds per lap, which is a lot better. Three laps to go. I think we might be okay now. They've got to catch at a rate of two and a half per lap to catch me on the last lap. So I think we'll be okay. No mistakes. Second warning, just got a bit wide there. Tried to get out of it, but still got punished. A penalty would put us under some pressure. If not, we're going to be okay. We've got the gap. Well, we're going to be just fine. Well managed. Quite a bit of tire wear. Actually finished a lot closer to puncture territory than I anticipated. But good decision. We stayed out. Didn't quite have the best pace, but the strategy made up for it. And we're going to pick up another win. Red Bull 2-3, Leclerc P4. We'll take it back to back. Thank you. I need a moment. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own and that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Here we are then, looking at the final race results. Confirmation of our race win. Leclerc P4, Rebel 2-3 Verstappen ahead of Perez and Norris P5 with the fast lap of the race ahead of Piastri. So McLaren still showing some pace. Mercedes having a bit of an off race. Hamilton with car trouble. George DNFing from the race. So the race plus the sprint results combined mean for the weekend we score 33 points, which is pretty much almost maximum. Verstappen second, Perez third, Leclerc fourth overall. And if we translate that to the standings, you can see we have a 59 point gap over Max, 66 over Leclerc and 75 over Perez, heading into the final 10 rounds. In the constructors, 68 points gap to Red Bull. So it's still all to play for, but a few more wins and we're nearly there. So guys, cheers for watching, like and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoy the episode and the sprint and yeah, as always, a big shout out to the members of the channel for supporting all the content. Check out the links down below, guys, and sponsors of the channel. Check out the two videos on screen as well if you haven't seen them already. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and that's goodbye from me. Adios.